All right, so here we are at the end of gas laws. This is when we go back to late last November when we were doing train tracks early December and we combine it with what we know about gas laws. Because I taught you how to do mole to mole questions using train tracks, right? I give you mole, you find the exchange rate from the balanced equation, then you give me back the mole of another country. I even taught you how to go grams to grams. Grams of one country to grams of another country. What I did not teach you is how to go grams to liters or liters to grams. Why? Because you needed to know about the ideal gas law. So these kinds of questions will marry train tracks plus the ideal gas law. Sometimes you may have to do the ideal gas law plus train tracks. <laughs> Thanks to the ideal gas law, we can expand our love for stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is just a fancy word, meaning you're going to have to use train tracks. From mass to mass problems to problems involving gases. All right. This is the question. Whenever you see a balanced equation, you need to think to yourself, oh, crap. And now you can begin whining all you want. It won't make a difference if you're taking a test because you'll still need to be quiet. If you see a balanced equation, odds are this is going to be a longer question that you may want to answer. And when you're taking the next test, which is 80 question, multiple choice, standardized mm -hmm. test, when you're taking the EOC, you may want to look at the balanced equation and go, okay, I can do this but I'd rather attack the ones that are faster and then come back and do the ones that are long train tracks. Okay? Here we go. Calculate the volume of a gas produced at one atmosphere in 25 degrees C. So, so far I'm thinking, hey, I need the ideal gas law. By the complete decomposition of 10.5 grams. So they want the volume of gas if they give me 10.5 grams. Oh, this is, this is the train track question. So I begin with 10.5 grams of KClO3. I do not want it to be in KClO3. I need it to be in oxygen. So I'm going to have to travel to that land. First place I go to is the bank, where I will exchange grams for what international monetary unit? And the bank will always issue me how many moles for how many grams? Eight. One mole for the formula mass. Potassium is 39.1, chlorine is 35.5, and three oxygens is 48. Somebody add that up real quick. What? Okay, so now we are in terms of mole. Now we can travel. We can travel from KClO3 land to oxygen land. And where do we get that exchange rate? In oxygen, it'll cost me three moles, what typically will cost me two moles in KClO3 land. Now, if you've gotten it that far, stop. Don't write any more because this next step is going to be wrong. But you tell me why this next step is going to be wrong. So I go to the bank and I tell the teller, okay, I would like to exchange all my moles for liters. And they'll say, don't you mean grams? They go, no, no, I need it in liters. They go, okay, okay. So for every one of your moles, I will give you 22.4 liters. But that <coughs> cannot happen. Because it's not at STP. Good job, Noah. It is at SP, standard pressure, but it is not at standard temperature, which is zero. So I cannot use our magic number 22.4 now. That's it. I'm stuck. 
I am stuck at this point. Can I convert to N to moles? Yes. 10.5 divided by 122.6. Enter times 3. Enter divided by 2. Enter. You need to go? Yes, go. Okay, so we're stuck. I need liters, <coughs> but all I got was moles. What can I possibly do? Okay, I only use one gas law, and that one gas law is? Combined ideal gas law, same thing. I need volume. Do I know pressure? Do I know temperature? Yes. Do I know the number of moles? Yes. I have two R's. Can I use one of the two? Yes. 0.0821 atmospheres, liters per mole Kelvin, and 8.31 kilopascals, liters per mole Kelvin. So, it's on the back of the periodic table. V is equal to nRT over P. Number of moles. Can we use an R? Which R? Do we know T? You see why? All divided by what is it? So, this is a marriage of train tracks and the ideal gas law. Where I'm given moles, I'm sorry, I'm given everything I need to find moles, and then I use moles with the ideal gas law to find volume. Would have been really nice if it had been at STP, wouldn't it? Yeah. But it wasn't. Any questions? Now, what if I give you the volume at non-standard conditions and I ask you to convert to grams you have to go backwards so you use ideal gas law first and then train tracks all right here's the next question okay it is at STP but better than that what is what do you not have what is missing that makes you happy a balanced equation. Okay, so this one is going to be an easier one. So it involves gases. What equation do I always write down? Do I know the volume? Do I know the temperature? Standard. Do I know pressure? Standard. Okay, that will allow me to find the number of moles, but they don't want the number of moles, they want the number of molecules. But if I find the number of moles, can I find the number of molecules? Yeah. What is standard pressure? Standard volume. No, not standard volume. They gave us the volume. Which R should we use? And the temperature is? One times 
divided by 0.0821, enter. Divided by 273, enter. I don't think so. What is it? Can I get that confirmed? Okay, so now how do we convert moles to molecules? Moles. One. Molecules. N. So point zero seven eight eight times Avogadro's number. Any questions? Yes? Oh, why could we not use the 22.4? Because you did not have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. I knew that I did not have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd because I had 1.75 liters. If they had given me 22.4 liters, then I would have said, oh, I don't even have to work this out. It is Avogadro's number but it was going to be just a tiny fraction of Avogadro's number because I didn't have 22.4. Now, Maxine, this is what you're expecting. First of all, what do you see that makes you go, oh. All right, sorry. Calculate the volume of CO2 at. Okay, so now what can we use that we were not allowed to use with the first equation? 22.4. Here we go. 152 grams of calcium carbonate. We go to the bank. We say, hey, we would like to exchange calcium carbonate for moles. The bank always says, okay, for one mole, we'll give you. Okay, you're going to have to figure that one out. Then I go to the exchange rate to see how much it's going to cost me to live in carbon dioxide land. And that exchange rate is? All right, now I'm in moles of carbon dioxide, so I go to the bank and go, hey, because we're at STP, can we exchange it right here, or do I have to use the ideal gas law building? Yeah, right we can exchange it right here because, and the bank says, oh yeah, honey, for one mole, I will give you, Yeah, because it's, this is a little bit more than one. So, yeah, what is it, 30? 30. <laughs> Do you see the difference between this one and the first one? Yeah. The first one, we were stuck having to use the ideal gas law. The second one, we could use 22.4 because it was at... All right. Let me give you the balanced equation. You figure out which way you have to do this one. Go. Figure out which way you have to do it. The hard way or the easy way, and then do it.
Yes, I'm sorry, it's 26.5 grams. Let me see. What? The goal is hydrogen lamp. All right, what's the number of moles? Now we use that in conjunction with the ideal gas law to find liters. Is that right? 64.7? All right. Any questions? Now remember that in your homework, there will be times in which I ask you to go in reverse. So what the first thing you'll have to do is use PV equals NRT to find moles and then go moles to moles, moles to grams. So it's this only in reverse order. 